I'm passionate about helping people overcome or prevent, preferably, cancer. When I realize that, you know, a hundred years ago, cancer was almost unheard of. You know, some people might have gotten it, but it was in their later years. And today, we're seeing young kids, very young kids, developing cancer. Cancers that impacted older people. Girls 14, 12 years old, even as young as 7 and 8, developing breast cancer. I mean, granted, it's rare, but it's happening. Why is this You're listening to Stacey Joy's Health Zone on OneTalkNetwork.com. Today's talk, I am out in the world finding people to help other people for the people, by the people. And today, I have a people for you. I have Dr. Marilyn Joyce with me today, and I have to tell you how excited I am about this interview. Uh, Marilyn has so many gifts and talents, and I am honored and so grateful to be able to bring her to you today. I traveled all the way down to Temecula to find Marilyn, and we are going to have some fun today. Today and for the past almost two and a half decades, Dr. Joyce, who is a registered dietitian and globally renowned inspirational keynote speaker, seminar leader, and trainer, author, international radio and TV personality, and health coach, has been inspiring audiences around the world as a motivational and inspirational speaker. And I've heard her speak on numerous occasions, and she is truly gifted. She's known by all as the Vitality Doctor, and has transformed the lives of thousands of people who have attended her seminars, who have bought her books and tapes, or have been coached by her. With almost 40 years of experience at the forefront of nutrition, health, and education, Dr. Marilyn approaches everything she does from a holistic perspective. You think we might be in alignment? I think yes. A television and radio personality on such diverse shows as Doctor to Doctor, Lisa, Montel Williams, Maury Povich, PBS Essentials, and Jenny Jones, Dr. Joyce has authored the best-selling books, Five Minutes to Health, I Can't Believe It's Tofu, and Instant Energy, The Five Keys to Unlimited Energy and Vitality, The Most Comprehensive Guide to Whole Person Health Available Today. Dr. Joyce has also been featured in numerous national and international magazines, including Cosmopolitan, Women's Day, Fit, Allure, Elle, First for Women, a lot of others that I, I mean, this, this list can go on and on and on about what she has done and what she has accomplished. As you're about to discover, Dr. Marilyn's expertise and passions in life include speaking on the power of preventative nutrition and lifestyle practices and making complex information extremely easy and user-friendly, doable in five minutes or less. Dr. Marilyn Joyce, I'm out of breath already. <laughs> Welcome to the show, Dr. Marilyn. Thank you so much, Stacy. I am absolutely thrilled to be with you today. We've known each other a long time, and we're so on the same page about everything. Yes, we are. I think I met you, gosh, when I first got into alignment with NSA, who makes Juice Plus. I met you as one of the speakers uh, in that company. It uh, must have been about 11 years ago, and there was a instant connection. There was a, a magnetism and a, a resonance that you, you just know when you have it. And, and we have that, and we're, uh, we're all working together to do the same thing, is to move humanity forward, to heal up the planet, heal up individuals, and I am super excited to have you here today. Marilyn, what is your journey, and, and why are you here today? Wow, that's a loaded question. <laughs> um, you know, Stacy, really, truly, I never planned to do what I'm doing now. You know, I mean, to I, nutrition, yes. Lifestyle, yes, but when I started in the health field, I was working with diabetes and renal disease, and life has a way of turning in a different direction when you least expect it to, and I was in the management area in my world and had risen to the top of the field and, and loved the success, didn't much like the work, but loved the success, and uh, was about to go and do a major presentation for the Canadian Dietetic Association when I noticed a spot on my face. And it was ugly. You know, it was big, black, purple, shiny, right under my eye. And I didn't think 
much about it except that I wanted it gone pronto. <laughs> so I went to the doctor and the doctor said, hmm, this could be serious. Like I'm 35 years old. How serious can this be? You know, just get rid of it. And it was melanoma. And I didn't know the first thing about melanoma. I deserved it. I'm fair skinned, blue eyed and all the rest of it. And I used to work out in the fields and as a photographer, you know, out, out traveling around the world as a photographer in my very young years and um, didn't think anything about it, you know, never did anything to protect myself. And here I am with melanoma. But one and a half weeks later, we uh, discovered that I also had uterine cancer, stage four. It had been misdiagnosed for several years because I was young and it was an older woman's illness. And that you could have knocked me over with a feather with when I heard that. It runs in my family. Two of my great aunts had been diagnosed with the same cancer, but they were a lot older, more than double my age. You know what I mean? It was like a shock to my system. And that began my journey of discovery, looking for answers. I did go through chemo. I did what I was told. I was in the medical world and almost died. And between my kids and I, we decided that that wasn't the way I was going to go out. So I started looking for every other alternative method available and went gradually further and further down the rabbit hole. You know, I would go into a remission, think I was scot-free and another occurrence to the tune of five times. And in 1989, I hit rock bottom, 88 pounds in a wheelchair, couldn't eat or drink anything. All I could do was suck on ice chips and was told that I had a week and a half to two weeks to live. Go home and take care of your affairs. Today, (laughs) I'm the vitality doctor. From 88 pounds in a wheelchair, almost dead, to thriving vitality doctor, that is truly remarkable. We need to fill in some of the gaps. So you're 88 pounds, you're in a wheelchair, your daughter took you out to a home show. Tell me that story. You have one heck of a great memory. (laughs) Yes, um, my daughter did. My daughter and my girlfriend dragged me off in the wheelchair to a home show. You know, a home show is where they introduce you to all these things that you need for your home, right? I'm like, I'm not going to be here. What am I doing at this home show? I soon discovered why I was there. I met Jim the Vitamix Man. And uh, he asked me if I could, if I'd like to try some of the things he was making. And I said, no, not really. I mean, (laughs) I don't want to be making a fool of myself here in front of everyone. And he said, but you can suck on ice chips, right? And I said, yeah. He said, good. And he made a concoction. He took cantaloupe, the fruit of the cantaloupe, carefully removed it from the skin, which would be contaminated, put it into this two horsepower lawnmower for food that's what I refer to it as and uh, whirled it word word it I guess is the term you might use with ice and a product called Sucanat which is you know sugarcane natural so it's from the sugarcane and one of the least processed sweeteners and if anybody's ever had cantaloupe in Canada in the middle of winter they know that you need to add something to make it taste better (laughs) But he made that concoction, and ironically, it stayed down. It was ice, so I was sucking on it, but it was the first thing that had had nutrition of any kind in it for several months. And about eight weeks later, my daughter looked at me and said, do you realize you've outlived your prognosis by at least six weeks? I was like, wow. Wow. That's true. You know, so it was like a, a a gift of hope. So that was one of the key things that occurred. But that same weekend, I also met Dr. Bernie Siegel. And he's an amazing oncologist who transformed the way that doctors look at cancer patients. And I was at an event that he did in Toronto the next day. And he came up and spoke to me. And he asked me if I'd ever done a gratitude journal. I I thought the man was insane. A what? (laughs) I'm dying here, and you think I should do a gratitude journal. What have I got to be grateful for? You know, I mean, I really felt that way. 
And he said, you know, looking at the fact that you're here and people took the time and effort to get you here, I'd say you've got a few things to be grateful for. He said, but here's my, my challenge to you. Go home and write five gratitudes a day. I'm like, five? God, I can't even think of one. (laughs) But he said, write the same gratitude five times if you have to. It doesn't have to be different, but just do it. You might be surprised because what you focus on expands. I'd never heard that terminology before. I have to be honest with you, it was like, what? (laughs) But I went home, and as I stared out the window on a very cold, dreary winter day, not uncommon for the middle of winter in Canada, Um, I looked out the window and I I remember praying. I remember, you know, and I don't think I'd prayed for years. And I said, God, if you want me to do this, you need to give me a sign. You need to give me some kind of sign. And not more than a couple of minutes later, the sun shone through those clouds. And I mean, it was at most for a minute, Stacy. But for that minute, in my heart and soul, that was a sign. And I wrote, Dear God, thank you for the sun. Five times. A month later, I wrote 137 gratitudes. And more than 23 years later, I'm still here. Wow. Uh, I have goosebumps. Where do we go from here, Dr. Marilyn Joyce? Uh, let's take a short break. Thank you for listening to Stacy Joyce Health Zone. We're with Dr. Marilyn Joyce. We are back. You're listening to Stacy Joyce Health Zone on onemusicnetwork.com, onetalknetwork.com. Today's talk. I am just now getting over my goosebumps from the intro. Uh, your story, Dr. Marilyn, is is uh, is is intense. It's passionate. It's it's raw. It's transparent. Um, let's move a little bit further down this road together. And I would like to explore with you, uh, you, you're so multifaceted, there's so much that you're aligned with and so much good. What are you passionate about today? Wow, that's a great question, Stacey. Um, I'm passionate about helping people overcome or prevent, preferably, cancer. When I realize that, you know, A hundred years ago, cancer was almost unheard of. You know, some people might have gotten it, but it was in their later years. And today, we're seeing young kids, very young kids, developing cancer. Cancers that impacted older people. Girls 14, 12 years old, even as young as 7 and 8, developing breast cancer. Granted, it's rare, but it's happening Why is this happening? Why are boys developing testicular cancer at such young ages today? Why are we seeing so much lymphoma in our little children, two years old and younger? Babies. It's not acceptable. It's just not acceptable. And the reason that we're experiencing this, I'm convinced, is because our diet is abominable. People are eating dead food with no life force. They're eating party food every day instead of real food. And they're living in toxic environments. They're not taking care of themselves. They're not exercising. I mean, the most exercise a lot of people get today is with their fingers on their computers or their remotes for their TV, right? Or those games kids are playing on their computers. That's not exercise. I mean, if I developed cancer at 35 and I came from a background of being active outdoors, playing sports, and eating basically a back to basics diet, it wasn't great. You know, Scottish diet, I'm from Scotland, I shared my wee Scots accent here <laughs> from Ochtar Mokti, you can. <laughs> but I'm from Scotland and the the food in Scotland was never that healthy, really. Uh, my grandparents had great food. They grew all their own produce. But my family, my, my mother and father, weren't that example. They were meat eaters, meat and potatoes, you know, with gravy. Vegetables were all overcooked if we had them. So, you know, I didn't come from a great diet, but at least the food had some origin of 
uh, originality, you know, is the original food. Today, you can have uh, you can get a burger and have it for 25 years, and it looks the same in 25 years as it did when you first bought it. You know, dead food. And environmentally, you know, we live in polluted areas of polluted water, polluted soil, polluted everything. You know, it's just everywhere we we look, everywhere we uh, we turn. And so, my passion is to go in and revamp people's lives, do what I needed to do in my own life, and that is throw out everything that wasn't living um, in the food department and throw out anything that was toxic in the cleaning environment, you know, for our, our personal hygiene and for our homes. You know, that's a good start. And then teach people how to get in touch with their innermost being. Take time out. You know, I have a philosophy or a saying, I should say, that is take five now to save five later. And that means take five minutes now to save five years later. That's what I should have done. I mean, I was, I'm was i a workaholic even today, but at least I love what I do now, and I do take five. You know, I take more than five. But during those years before I was diagnosed with cancer, I didn't. I mean, it was it would be a rare experience for me to stop and take five minutes out just to be still. I mean, I didn't know how to be still. I think... I probably have a touch of ADD or whatever they call it these days. But the fact of the matter was I just didn't know to do that either. No one ever talked about that. In fact, in our culture, I would say that we're made to feel guilty if we take time out. You know, it's the get it done, do, do, do. We've forgotten how to be, be present, be in the moment. So that's part of what I teach my clients. The cancer story is is quite complex, and uh, you know from from a holistic perspective, uh, I do agree with you that our toxic load is way too high. Our DNA gets oxidized and hit, and then we clone bad cancer cells. And then if you go through and you get scanned, and they see the cluster of cells growing together, and then bam, you're in the cancer industry, and you have just gotten an e-ticket ride through cancer treatment. Let me just talk about you for a moment. When you are helping people to decrease the toxic load, one of the things that always comes up is it's everywhere. It's everywhere. It's in our cleaning agents. It's in our food supply. It's in the water we drink. It's in the air we breathe. How can you transform somebody to decrease their toxic load in a way where they're not crawling out of their skin and completely and totally losing their minds and they, they can become that person who others just kind of see them coming and turn the other way because they're talking about toxic things and trying to get cleaned up and it gets to be too much. How do you deal with that? Great question. For one thing, you and I are so much on the same page. You know, the small changes make a big difference kind of thing. And so it's not about completely transforming everything overnight because no one's going to do it. You know, it's like the New Year's resolutions. You know, you set about 10 resolutions up and how many have you actually done at the end of the first month or at the end of a year, in fact? None. Because you get in, you go into overwhelm. So it is about taking it a step at a time. And I'm all about five-minute strategies. That's really what my MO is as well. It's like if I couldn't do it in five minutes, I probably wasn't going to do it myself. So I teach my clients five-minute strategies. You know, And so maybe today we'll get rid of something that has trans fats in it because you know, I teach you what's wrong with the trans fats, why they're not healthy for you, and then we'll just go through your pantry and throw out everything with trans fats in it. And then we'll replace it. And I, I really love the crowding out process, you know. Instead of throwing something out initially, it's always a good idea to, re, you know, start, start replacing it. So, for example, you'll buy things that have no trans fats. And before you know it, you don't have any trans fats in your cupboard, right? Because you've literally replaced it with healthier things. So it's learning how to shop for the healthier foods, learning how to shop for the healthier cleansing agents, and then gradually crowding out that which doesn't serve you. You know, it's and so it's a process, really. I mean, I'll go in and work with people and, and do a major cleaning, but I know that they're probably going to, you know, still find ways to, to bring that stuff back in. But over the course of working with someone over, you know, six months or a year, they start to 
uh, incorporate these healthier strategies without even realizing that they're doing it. Beautiful. That, that's a that's a great concept. You answered that question nicely. Uh, we're going to take a short break, Dr. Marilyn, and when we come back, I'd like to talk a little bit about Kick Cancer in the Can. That's a program that is thriving now, and uh, we're going to find out a little more about it. Thank you for listening to Stacy Joyce Health Zone. We'll be right back with Dr. Marilyn Joyce. Welcome back to Stacy Joyce Health Zone. I'm sitting with the wonderful Dr. Marilyn Joyce. She's the founder and creator of both Vibrant Health Academy Unlimited and Kick Cancer in the Can, trademark. Kick Cancer in the Can is a program. Well, you know what? I'm just going to let Dr. Marilyn talk about this. Tell us a little bit more about what this program is, Dr. Marilyn. Thank you so much, Stacey. I'm filled with joy to talk about it. I had an epiphany about four years ago uh, that, you know, cancer is on the rise and it was, as I said a a few minutes ago, it's an illness that didn't really exist in any great numbers 100, 200 years ago. And today, we're seeing it in younger and younger people. So I went to bed one night and just felt incredibly sad, you know, tearful, tearfully sad, and thought, I need a solution. I need something I can use uh, to help people, you know, a system. And I asked myself what my system was that helped me. You know, what was it that I did? Because obviously there was some system there. You know, there was the Vitamix man, of course, but, you know, there was more than that. And so I went to bed that night, and I woke up probably in the middle of the night with this kick cancer in the can. Yeah, right on. Kick it to the curb. (laughs) You know, and that was kind of what kept going through my head. So I got up and I started to write. You know, I just sat down at my computer and started writing. And it was the five keys that I had learned in 1971, Mm. back in the hippie era, when I followed the Beatles to India. (laughs) Not literally, but they went there first and everybody followed. And I was one of them. And um, I ended up studying yoga in India for almost two years. During that time, I learned these five keys. Now, at that time, these five keys took the better part of a day to do in their entirety. So I knew that wasn't what worked for me back in my culture. But it was taking those five keys and distilling them down into five-minute bites at a time. That's what it would be. It would be taking those keys and teaching people those five keys that are Physical, physical, mental, emotional, and spiritually based. They're not just about the physical because that's the issue in our world today. We take the human being, and this is only in the last two to three hundred years at most, probably 150 to 200, but we've taken the human being and divided them into pieces. And we treat the physical part, and then we send them to someone else to get the emotional part dealt with, and then we send them to someone else to get the mental part sorted out, and then we send them to their spiritual counselor to deal with the spiritual part. Kind of fragmented, don't you think? Very. So I started thinking, this is not what got me well. What got me well was dealing with everything, every day, in a system. And that's when I realized that I had actually taken my the things I'd learned so many years before and without knowing consciously what I was doing, I had distilled them down and utilized them to get well. And then I'd used them with my own patients over the years, unconsciously, mind you, but used them to assist patients in overcoming the problem. And where I really got to fully practice that was when I was director of nutrition, ironically, for the Cancer Treatment Centers of America. But they gave me free reign to run my own programs. And so all of that was incorporated, and I worked with the best. I was working with, you know, Dr. Carl Simonton, who had literally distilled down a list of personality aspects of a cancer patient, such as being a people pleaser. I'm, I can tell you, I definitely felt in, felt, fell into that one, and I think many people do. But there were many other aspects to it, too. And so I got the opportunity there to test my system out. 
and we had amazing success. So when I left there, I began to put it all together for my patients, still not understanding fully what I had there until I had this epiphany, kick cancer in the can. And it would become this program, the five keys to overcoming cancer or preventing it. Who should contact you? What kind of a person would want to work with Dr. Marilyn Joyce and her program, Kick Cancer in the Can? Ah, uh, very good question. Most people would assume it would just be a cancer patient that would want to contact me. But the fact is cancer is a family affair. If someone is diagnosed with cancer, the whole family is affected. So it might be the cancer patient that contacts me. It might be the caregiver. And it might be a personal caregiver for someone who has cancer, someone they love who has cancer, or it could be a professional caregiver. In fact, a large part of my work over the years has been working within a hospital scenario, teaching RNs and doctors and dietitians how to take care of themselves because they're caregivers. And more caregivers die giving care to the patients than the patients themselves. Really? Yeah. Most people aren't aware of that. How can we reach you? Well, thank you for asking. <laughs> there are a couple of ways. One is I have a website, which is www.kickcancerinthecan.com. Pretty simple, pretty basic. And then I have an 800 number, which is 800-352-3443. And that's 800-352-3443. Very nice. Uh, what else can you inspire us with around programs that you're involved in or just what's on your heart around this topic, Dr. Marilyn? Around my heart? Hmm, great question. I would say that what I would suggest to people that they do right now is take a look at what's important to them in their lives. And I'm, I'm going to share something that was very powerful, if it's okay with you. It impacted me dramatically because I as I mentioned earlier, was working at a job I hated when I was diagnosed with cancer. Made a lot of money, on the surface appeared very successful. But I was in administrative dietetics, and I am not an administrator type at all. I can do anything that I set my mind to. You know, that's the human nature thing, right? But I hated it. You're a gotta dance to the beat of my own drum kind of a person, I can say for sure. <laughs> You've got that right for sure. And it took me a long time to get it. But during my own cancer journey, I realized there were two things that I had not been receiving in my life and or, or experiencing. And one of them was having fun. And the other one was joy in my work fulfillment so flip forward years later I'm working with patients and I get them to make the ma major changes in their diet I get them to clean out their homes I get them to do the right kind of exercise and I'd have them on rebounders you know mini trampolines so that they could detox their lymphatic system at the same time as they were getting exercise and so I had all those things in place but I remember talking to one of my patients who was a very wealthy man and beautiful looking specimen of a man initially. And he did everything. But he hated his job. He hated his career. But he was making millions. And, you know, I worked with him for a couple of years. He went into remission. And then, you know, we kind of lost touch. And then out of the blue, I got a phone call from him. And uh, actually from his ex-wife who was caretaking with him at the time. And she said, he wants to see you. And I went to see him and I didn't recognize him. He had that elephant trunk and the elephant legs and the tiny little head. You know, his body was deteriorating quickly. Uh, the edema was so bad. And... Uh, Two days later, he did pass away with, as I held his hand. But his last words to me were, I did everything you said except one thing. You told me 
to sell my business and find a more fulfilling career. We talked about what I could do and they were all great, but my fear stopped me and now I won't be here to see my children grow up. And shortly after, he passed away. And I've never forgotten that because to me, you have to live your life in integrity with who you are, with your mission. Everyone has a purpose and a mission for being here. Yes, take care of your diet. Yes, make sure you get the right kind of exercise in. Yes, take time out. You know, all those things are important. But you have to also live your passion and your mission. You have to find it and live it. That is amazing, Dr. Marilyn Joyce. Um, We're going to come back and talk about the specifics of a healthy life. Uh, We're going to take a short break. You're with Dr. Marilyn Joyce and Stacey Joyce Health Zone. We're back with Dr. Marilyn Joyce. This is Stacey Joyce Health Zone on OneTalkNetwork.com. We've been talking a lot about some some very serious, deep issues around finding your passion, finding your voice, finding what you're happy doing, and connecting to the universe in a significant way. Uh, not being happy with what we're doing is a contributing factor. It's a variable in the cancer story. I'd like to take the rest of our time together, Dr. Marilyn, to talk about, you know, what are the specific things that you recommend? And I I would love it if you could put it into the context of how you're actually following your own advice. Um, You know, monkey see, monkey do. Mm -hmm. Do as I do, not do what I say. I don't know what that is. It's something like that. But I would like to share with the listeners how you, Vitality Doctor, survivor of cancer five times, how you live your life and what you put out there into the world, if you could share that with us, please. I would love to, Stacy, for sure. Um, what I'll do is I'll just give you a typical day, if that works. Right. I think that's probably... So I can also bring in, tie in the fact that it's five-minute segments. Other than my walk, which is a, you know, last year was my my year of beginning these longer walks, but that's kind of in tune with nature. But that aside, for the bulk of the years before, what I do is I get up in the morning and I do what is called the sun salutation in yoga. And I do it for five minutes. That's it. And I do... There's 12 sequences, 12 steps, pardon me, in in the sequence, 12 movements. And it takes me a minute to do one sequence of 12 movements. So that's five times I do it. And that's my way of stretching and moving and breathing first thing in the morning when I get up. By the fifth one, I'm pretty well stretched. So that's number one. Number two is I will generally have first thing in the morning after that, my lemon drink, which is the juice of about half of a lemon with uh, if a, lar- a large lemon, organic, um, in hot water with um, a little bit of pure maple syrup and cayenne pepper. And that revs up my peristaltic system and gets my body going and definitely cleans the system out very, very well. And that would replace, say, a cup of coffee? It would, although I will be honest with you, I really enjoy organic coffee. I don't drink coffee normally when I go out unless I know for sure it's fair trade organic coffee. Not always easy to find in this community that I live in now, but when I lived in L.A., it was much easier to find, so I have it at home. So I will have that occasionally, probably three or four times a week, and I don't have any guilt about it at all. But I will have my lemon drink first thing in the morning because it's a great detoxer takes about one or two minutes to prepare, and it's, it just cleans your system out. And then I'll have a smoothie, and, you know, maybe half an hour later. And before I have the smoothie, I do have a, a fruit and vegetable concentrates that I use called Juice Plus. Uh, to me, it's a two-minute strategy. One, I open the, the bottles, put them in my hand. Two, I fill a glass of water. And three, I drink it down. Can't get much easier than that. So it's my gap. It fills the gap, you know, between what I should be having. Some days I just can't get it all in. I, you know, I'm not a huge person, so I can only eat so much in a day. So I have that with my smoothie, and my smoothie is generally, you know, fresh fruit, maybe some frozen berries if the berries aren't in season, um, tofu, 
you know, and I just basically have a really, uh, really delicious cold smoothie. Probably four or five times a week I'll have that. I like to, you know, spoil myself on the weekend and have something hot like oatmeal or something like that, you know. So, but anyway, that would be my normal breakfast, that or some oatmeal or something like that. Throughout the day, when I'm feeling a lot of stress, I have a rebounder, mini trampoline. And the research is very conclusive about that, that it does detox the lymphatic system. In fact, it's one of the best ways to detox your lymphatic system. And what's impacted when you have cancer? Most often, the lymph system, exactly. So apart from building strong bones and strong muscles and all that stuff, it also detoxes your lymphatic system. So I'll take five minutes and just bounce. It doesn't have to be significant. You can do what we call the baby bounce. Your feet barely come off the, the mat. But it's really relaxing. It just changes your state. So if you're stressed out, it's great a great stress releaser. A lunch for me would normally be either a large salad or veggies and hummus, you know, homemade hummus if I have that. That would be a, a typical meal for me. In between meals, I'll eat fresh fruit. I mean, when t- people talk about fast food, you know, I'm thinking there isn't much faster food than an apple or a banana or an orange or a pear, right? I mean, even a red pepper. Wash it and eat it, right? You can't get faster than that. So when people talk about a drive through I mean, you could take 20 minutes sitting in that drive through to get the food, and it's dead food. It's not <laughs> So anyway, those would be my kind of snack items and my meals. And I really, for me, a salad is, I, you know, growing up Scottish, I never knew a salad. I did. I, my grandparents definitely made salads, but when we mo- emigrated to Canada, a salad was iceberg lettuce and some tomato on it. You know, that's what I grew up on. And so I hated I hated salads. But once I started making my own, I realized I could put anything I wanted in there. All different kinds of colors go into it. You know, the plethora of vegetables go into it. Maybe I'll throw in some seeds, some nuts, make my own dressings. And I have a great meal that's tasty and does the body good. And when you have that kind of food going into your system, it only takes a few minutes to make. And people say, oh, it takes too long to make a salad. Look, if you're not going to take the lettuce and wash it and tear it up and all the rest of it, buy it already in a bag ready to pour into a bowl. You know, I mean, there's no excuse in today's era, you know, in the era that we live in. There's no excuse. You can get so much stuff almost ready, readily prepared, you know, so. Just uh, sorry for grabbing the mic out of your hand, Dr. Joyce. Uh People are making excuses for not doing certain things, but I do believe that it's more of a lack of education and lack of inspiration. So that's why you're here. That's why I'm here, so that we can educate and inspire. Keep going. I'm really curious about your lifestyle. That's very cool. I agree with you. And I think that, you know, you just brought up something very significant. The fact is, we can talk until we're blue in the face to get to try to get people to change their way of living, but it's by example that people learn the most. So if people uh, see someone that's you know over 40 or over 50, or over 60, and they have more energy than they do, and they're in their 20s, they're probably going to be inspired. I mean, I have a lot of young friends who say to me, "I just want what you've got. Whatever you're doing, I want it," mm-hmm. because. At over 60, I have more energy than most people that are 20. It's through example. So people see what I do. I mean, granted, some people will call me the food police or whatever, or they're afraid to eat food in front of me that they think I'll judge them on. I don't judge anybody on anything because it's really about where you're at. I've eaten chips and french fries and things like that. I grew up on those things. I'm from Scotland, for crying out loud. Fish and chips, you know? It's the most most popular meal. But at this stage in my life, I really like having the energy I have from the living foods that I eat. Now, do I eat junk? I remember (laughs) one talk I did at a Barnes & Noble or a Borders store, and there were about 150 people in the audience, and it was just, I was having a ball. You know, I was really revving the audience up because I could see a lot of them weren't eating very well. You know, they didn't have any, any energy, but they were hearing me. 
And one woman stood up. She was an, a registered dietitian, as it turned out, like myself. And she said, you're not going to tell me you don't eat chocolate or anything like that. I looked at her and I said, I would never tell you that. I absolutely do eat chocolate. I love it. But the difference between the way I eat it and the way other people eat it is I choose the best chocolate I can find. So you're not powering down like, you know, Hershey's milk chocolate bars and Hershey's kisses, right? (laughs) Not a chance. You know, it's funny. I think I have a Hershey's chocolate here that someone brought over on Halloween and it's still there because it's not what I eat. What do you eat? If I was going to have chocolate, I go for the darkest chocolate I can find. I've really acquired a taste for it. I love dark chocolate. And I prefer something that's 87% or greater cacao so that I know I'm getting the real chocolate with very little added sugar. Organic for sure. Absolutely, yeah. Thank you for um, mentioning that because that is absolutely for sure what I look for. I look for organic in almost everything. Well, if possible, everything. When I'm visiting people, I don't make a big deal about what they provide as much as uh, my own existence at home. And why is organic important? Well, (laughs) you know, for one thing, we want to avoid genetically modified foods. You know, foods that have what we call GMOs, genetically modified organisms, because we don't know the long-term effect of those. And so far, the research is indicating probably hazardous results to our health increased cancer, ADD, ADHD, you name the problem, they're tracking it back to these kinds of foods. And of course, allergens, you know. So we want to avoid the GMOs, but we also want to avoid the chemicals, the pesticides, the herbicides, the things that they're spraying on our food that gets into the food. Yeah, ready roundup. I mean, that is, those things are, well, there's actual research that indicates a direct correlation between the pesticides and children who are ADHD. You know, hyperactivity directly track track back to the pesticides, herbicides, and high sugar intake that we have today. And the problem is, with foods that are not organic, they have generally speaking, very little taste. I mean, if you were to take an egg for an exam, for example. Now, I know if you're vegan or vegetarian, you might not eat an egg. But we'll just say, you take an organic egg and you take one of the store-bought eggs, you know, the, the factory farmed eggs, you know, from factory farmed chickens. You cook those two eggs. One is going to be pale, anemic, Uh, yolk and the other one is going to be a brilliant yellow yolk one is going to have no flavor with it unless it's you add flavor to it that's why we use so much salt so much sugar so much of these ingredients msg excitotoxins beyond compare we use these to add flavor because food has no flavor but if you buy organic the food naturally has flavor it's grown naturally and the the soil has to be treated a certain way. They have to turn the soil. They rotate the crops. They have more of a mineral content in them and other 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 things like that. Absolutely. It's a whole process. My grandparents in Scotland grew all their own produce. And it was a seven-year rotation system that my grandfather and grandmother used. They literally used the ground one year, the next year they used another part of the ground while they were mulching and create composting and all the rest of that stuff, all naturally. They didn't use any kind of sprays at all. Now, my grandfather did go out with his wheelbarrow and collect patties of dung, <laughs> at which he used in his mulching and his composting and so on. It was all natural. It was everything that came out went back in. Everything that went back in, came out as whole food product with flavor and nutrient density. I mean, there is a lot of research that indicates that the nutrient density today of the soil, which is so depleted, is next to nil. There's 99% more iron in spinach that's grown organically than that which is grown commercially. That's pretty shocking. Wow, good stuff, Dr. Marilyn. I'm, I'm so 
happy to have been able to sit with you for this past hour. Do you feel complete with this interview? I think I do. I, You know, the one thing I would say at this point is, you know, for the listeners, just to really listen to what we've talked about and just take one step. It's not about trying to change your life in a, in a day or an hour or even a week. It's about taking one step at a time and doing that for a week or two weeks until it becomes a part of your life and then add in another step you know it might be as simple as adding in a vegetable you've never eaten right or adding a fruit that you've never eaten or trying a new way of preparing your oatmeal we've both written books about this topic what is the title of your book well my book my present book is instant energy the five keys to unlimited energy and vitality. But previous to that, it morphed from a book called Five Minutes to Health. So I know that you and I are very much on the same wavelength about all of that. You know, it's really about simple steps that you can implement immediately. And uh, yeah, that's it. That's it in a nutshell. In a nutshell. Ooh, we could do something with that. (laughs) Well, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for taking the time out of your busy life. I know you're out and about. You travel all over the place, but I had to track you down in Temecula. You're going to come listen to me talk here in Temecula tonight about my book, One Little Thing, How to Make Big Leaps with Tiny Steps. And I am so appreciative of you being here. Thank you so much for taking the time out and just sharing with us what makes you tick and what makes you happy and what you're passionate about. You're a true, true gift to the population at large. And thank you again for being here, Dr. Marilyn. Thank you so much. I could not think of a more enjoyable person to spend the time with uh, on the same wavelength. And uh, just thank you so much for this opportunity, Stacey. Once again, how can we reach you? Oh, well, the website is www.kickcancerinthecan. And the phone number is 800 352 3443. Dr. Marilyn, you are a blessing. Thank you so much. And thank you, listeners, for tuning in to StacyJoy.com, OneTalkNetwork.com, bringing the people to the people, by the people, for the people. And we shared the last hour with Dr. Marilyn Joyce, signing off for now.